The Economic War The economic war spares nobody. On all the continents, the conqueror's handwriting spurts up along the highways and in the cities. Tall signboards blazing day and night, Coca-Cola, American Express, Benetton, Fuji, Lancome, McDonald's. The newspaper Moscow is for sale entirely in English. Television proclaims in color with supportive smiles the grandeur of Omo, head and shoulders, and other detergents and deodorants. Money has no smell and imposes an ideal. The words that print themselves on television screens, in display windows and advertisements, in the unknown lettering of the people who live here, have a force and a meaning which doesn't come through when they are deciphered. They are penciled arabesques, respected both by the peasant woman who has come to the city to sell a few kilos of potatoes and by the hotel porter who knows a few scraps of Western languages. It's sufficient that they are legible to local and foreign businessmen, to gilded youth, and to various underworld professionals. And I, who walk back up Tseverskaya Street, formerly Gorky Avenue, too bad about him. I'm probably wrong to ask myself unpragmatic questions. What I want to know about public writing is of no interest to the life that's here. I have nothing to sell, I buy nothing, and what I write is meant neither for businessmen, nor the nouveau riches, nor for the petty crooks. As for the porter and the peasant with her potatoes, they have other, more urgent preoccupations. Whosoever writes, isn't he on the side of those who transcribe their trademark, a slogan or graffiti? At the end of the avenue, where the industrial fumes and neon signs have chased away the horses of the sun, the Marlboro cowboy lights up a cigarette while holding the reins of something one doesn't see. One waits for the sky to retire like a manuscript that is rolled up. That was written in Moscow, March 29, 1993.